Troops, here we are. Uh, as promised, I'm doing podcast every single day. New routine. 21 days on furlough. Day two, second guest. Um, Dave Wilkinson, he's a performance coach. If you don't know what a performance coach is, after the next half an hour you will. And possibly, maybe, definitely, you might need a performance coach. And David will be the man to go to. David, how are you doing? I'm very well, mate. Thank you for that uh, lovely introduction there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's okay. Just um, slip us that tenor in next time you see us. Um, <laughs> over uh, sharp edge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over sharp edge. Um, performance coach, everywhere you turn now, and especially if you're on um, LinkedIn, and I don't want to tie everyone with the same brush, but it seems to be a very hot topic. Um, when did it come about? And why has it come about? So I would say that the self-development stratosphere has just gone off the radar. This place where people want to grow themselves personally, professionally, because I think people are recognizing now that the difference between where they are and yeah. where they want to be yeah. is self-development, that bit in the middle, and whether or not that's their own mindset or the way they perform or the way they optimize in their work. And I think that's, driven it further forward where people are like yeah i, I, I get messages regularly or i'm interested in self-development i'm interested in personal growth i'm interested in, in bettering myself and i think that's where now people right. are kind of resonating because i yeah. think also people don't always understand what a coach is do they because people think oh health and fitness coach or you know you know sports coach now mm. this is kind of like well you can be a business coach right yeah and when you first started out on this, you come from the world of personal training, don't you? That's your original start out background. That's the one, mate, yeah. What made you change from developing people's physical experience to their mental sort of outlook appearance? Right. Okay. So I'm going to share a little bit of the story, right? It's Go for it. So, so, yes, you're absolutely right, mate. I was in the health and fitness game for, for a very long time. And in that, in that, I did a lot with like kind of helping people get their kind of fitness in check, lose weight, get yeah. stress, just get the whole life on track. And whilst I was doing that, I was building a business with it, building a successful business doing it. But yeah. in all of that, I lost sight of what I was doing it for, like why I was doing this, why I was in this industry for. Mm -hmm. And it became more business, became about making money, mm -hmm. and it was less about the training side of thing. And I lost myself in that. But also whilst I was doing that, I started neglecting my personal relationship, started mm -hmm. affecting my relationship at home with my partner to the point where we split up. Wow. And we separated for a period of time. And I always remember this moment and I was like, had this successful gym, financially successful gym, doing very well, you know, members of staff in there, good team involved. But my fiance had left me. I was sitting alone in my flat, had this couch I'd been given off somebody because she took the furniture, right? Uh -huh. I this, had this TV that didn't work, mate. And I was sitting there, right? Just like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it was like, honestly, I can look back and laugh now, but at the time, mate, it was like, it was a very much a wake up call. Like you've sacrificed your relationship, your mental sanity, everything yeah. about yourself just to have this successful business. And I was like, this is, there's got to be a better way. So that set me on this track of, okay, how can we have it all? Because I like to work with, with, with my clients about balance, like yeah. having a good business, being physically fit, being mentally sharp, but taking care of your, your home life and your family. And that journey from that point there was kind of like, it wasn't easy, mate. That still took years and mm. a lot of self development. But that was kind of the shift moment of like, there's got to be a better way than this. We almost need that um, catalyst for change, don't we? You, you, you need that, like, wow, what, what am I doing moment. Yeah. And, and obviously, um, that was the moment for you. Who is it that you're coaching? Like, is there a certain demographic? Is there a certain age group? Like, what sort of people are coming to you? Yeah, so I, I only work with men. So I work, work with male, male business owners, usually right. from the age of 30 late 30s um why men this is always get asked this question why just men why men and it's because i am a man yeah. <laughs> but it's, because, it's because i feel that through my experiences and journey i can resonate better with the guy's challenges and experience like problems so when a guy's on the 
a call to me and he's talking about his challenge around his confidence and his ability to step up in his life. Mm -hmm. I get that because I've been there. Yeah. So I understand it. It's uh, So it just works better for me for working with that type of person. And because of the business element, because I'm involved in business and that helps that communication with those people and that's why I went for it. So it's just because I can resonate with them, my experiences yeah. shared and I just it's just easy for me and I like it. Would you say men are slowly changing and more welcoming to this sort of way of thinking? Because if I look back to sort of my dad um, and people from his generation, like if you'd have said, do you want to go on a self-development course or, or have a coach? <laughs> like it would have just been, do you know what I mean? It would have been no chance. And, and I feel like it's, right. it's slowly changing what you take. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my dad would have been the same. Like, what, <laughs> what are you talking about, son? <laughs> you know what I mean? are talking about? But uh, yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's slowly changing. I would hundred mm. percent agree that um, in my experience, women are a lot more receptive to this. Yeah. a lot more receptive. Yeah. However, I think men are slowly changing now. I can understand that because when I went through periods of my life where I was struggling for help. I thought it was weak. I was like, oh, mm. I, can, I can ask for help. I, like People think I'm weak until I realized that it wasn't asked for help. It was, it, was to, it was to have some accountability, some support to work through somebody mm. who's outside of my life and outside of my mm. head. I think that's what us men need to recognize. It's, it's actually shown strength to go, do you know what? I'm, I have a challenge in this part of my life. I need some support or some guidance or some accountability to get past mm. this. Yeah. It's it's an it's a dead interesting one, and I feel like women are much further uh, further forward, and almost a, a, a taking advantage of all of these great courses out there. People like yourself, because obviously there's people doing doing it for women as well, and, and they're taking all these personal yeah. development courses. And I don't believe there is a, a a difference in the two sexes, as in. A great businesswoman is a great businessman. Do you know what I mean? Like it's the same. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when do you initially when people approach you? Do people approach you like a bit standoffish, or are people on brand straight away? So, so, this, so a little bit of both. I've had people like very standoffish, very like toe dippy, just like you know, like maybe yeah. just reach out or like what you're talking about, and then that might like have a little conversation. I might not hear from them for months, and then they'll feel when it's ready for them. Mm. I think men need to be in a place of pain. I'm in like I'm in such a challenging, stressful, painful situation that to get out of it, and that's when they'll go for it. Yeah. But I have had some guys go, look, I I resonate completely with what you're saying. I put my hand up. What do I do? What do I need to do? So I think there's like that both parts of it. Yeah. Um. But I'm working with somebody out there to to get that even clearer and just to be like able to speak to people better, so I can reach more clients. I suppose. And where do you uh, particularly find your clients from? Um. You've got a really good presence on LinkedIn. Is that where you get most of your work from? Uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn and going to networking groups. So they because. Because I think, like, with what I do, mate, people buy into you as much as 100%. they do the product. I mean, it's personal coaching at the end of the mm. day, and you're the one representing what you deliver. So people buy into you, so people are getting to meet you, speak to you. I think that works very well. I think there's still a lot of work online to be done, and I'm still working for that, like, to reach further afield. But that's, like, a, that's a longer-term relationship. But LinkedIn, I get good resonation on LinkedIn to get people to come to events that I run or on webinars and then I meet them and, and I think that works well for me right now. Yeah. Um, your network is your net worth is a saying that a lot of people use. Um, what do you do when you go networking? Do you have a strategy or, or how did you learn to network? Um, so I, I'm just, I tell you what, I learned a couple <laughs> of things, right? I'm going to share this with you, right? Go for it. Big, biggest fucking problem with networking, right, is people go there and are so worried about themselves. How mm. am I coming across? Will people like me? Will people get what I'm saying? And they're just living in their own world. Mm. And so they're not really taking anything else in. So what I've found is if I go to networking and I'm just present in that networking session where I'm just listening to what other people need, I'm just having good conversation with people, yeah. just connecting with people. I'm not necessarily selling. If people, if I, if someone says, "What do you do?" and I tell them, if they don't ask any more questions, I don't 
tell them anymore. I don't feed it. I just get interested in what they're doing. Genuinely yeah. really curious about the other person. Yeah. And then I think that's helped me a lot because that is my strategy. My strategy is not necessarily to sell. It's to build relationships. And would you say um, you, you're you very sort of, you say, you come across to me as a very outgoing, forward-facing, friendly guy. Um, is that the is that the way to go, and is that how you go about it? You you go to networking events, and you do you, do you speak at them, or do you just go there to purely work the room? So I've done a bit of both, mate. I've been in networking and I've spoke at networking events. Actually, yeah. I've delivered a presentation. I've delivered. I've done sixty seconds. I've even um, even have a a bit where I support another business to run networking events. So, but but it wasn't always like that, though, John. I wasn't mm. always confident. Like the thought of going to a networking group was like, whoa, I, I, like like fearful. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I can honestly say that. I would say probably like a few years ago, I didn't want to do it. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, I had to push myself to get back into that arena because I knew it was going to be a good place for me. So it hasn't always been easy. But what I would say is by turning up and just being yourself, not trying to be anybody else. I don't even think you need to be this polished, like, oh, you've got to be this polished business person. I think just being yeah. you. Nobody can say that's right or wrong because you're just being yourself. I I sometimes get accused of being um, too too me, but my argument to that is, if you want um, Cadbury's cream egg ice cream, then I'm your man. Um, and if you want vanilla, I'm not your man. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And exactly. <laughs> people <laughs> people either want it or they don't want it. And uh, and by being yourself. All you're doing there is you're cutting out the bullshit time of someone saying he's definitely not my cup of tea, or 100. percent I'd like to, um, I'd like to, you know, go on an event or get to know a bit more. Do you know what I mean? I think that's there's too many people who they have this like oh polished persona, like oh you should post like this on LinkedIn and you should post like this on Facebook and you should do this, but if that's really not you, then when these people meet you, they're <laughs> going to be like, well. It was this character because this isn't this isn't what I signed up for. It's a disconnect, isn't it? Mm. It's an absolute disconnect. A hundred percent. You go to a networking group and you turn up, not yourself. Yeah. And somebody books on your course and tip up, and then you're being you, which is the best way to be. They'll be like, "Who's this guy?" <laughs> and I'm like that. I totally agree. I think you should write how you speak. I think you should talk about it. I should you should present yourself. Yeah, you're not. There's maybe you go to a networking group and you're not. You're not effing and blinding or whatever yeah. that is you yeah. level of like yeah. you know yeah. respect, like respect respect you know but i think you've got to be you and when you when you're yourself and you just your real raw on yeah. self life becomes easier you stop yeah. hiding all the time you stop trying to fake it all the time you just you and that connects better with people and you feel more comfortable with it so this um new way of working uh, a lot of people are becoming uh entrepreneurs or, or, or own business owners do you work from home or are you mobile do you have an office how, how does it work for you what before COVID-19 what was your sort of working week like <laughs> or the COVID-19 <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yes I did do a lot more out and about stuff I had mm. probably 25% of my time working from home and at least you know 75% working out of home going to coffee shops meeting people face to face I did Brilliant. most coaching face to face and most training and events face to face. Yeah. Now obviously I can't do any. Yeah. And you know what? Funny enough, I, I, going going forward after COVID nineteen, I'm like I'm gonna have more online, but still some more powerful offline, but not as much, and switch it over a little bit. So I still want the offline stuff where I'm still doing great training days, meeting people. Mm. But I think having a bit more online will just reach the scope a little further. Um, and I'm finding I'm being funny enough more productive by being at home more. Wow, it's it's about routine, isn't it? It's about structure, and I feel like a lot of people, I think like a lot of people at the moment will be learning a lot about themselves. And I think there'll be some people thinking, "Oh, oh, I'm definitely an entrepreneur." And the moment that the the ground's got a little bit sort of muddy and sticky, they've gone. Actually, I'd rather just work for someone. Um, it was always said to me in the army, um, chief, chiefs and Indians, and um, some people are natural chiefs, mm -hmm. and some people are Indians. Now you need, 
you need good Indians. Do you know what I mean? And and I, and I think like you need to know where you, where you stand with that. Like yeah. I'm like I've been a chief from 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 day one. Do you know what I mean? I I I, I struggle being in a work environment with people who I think, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes people make decisions and you just, I, I just start to think, well, it ain't my business. So if that's the wrong choice, you'll pay for it, you'll pay for it with your job. Do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and, and that's, but so, sometimes it, it just sort of smacks at the, the ridiculous the way some people make decisions. And it's like, oh yeah, I can see why you, you're an Indian. Do you know what I mean? I can see why it is, it is what it is. What do you think? The working world, and especially the self-employed, will take from this period. I think the self-employed period, from talking to, from like my own perspective and talking to my clients, a lot who are self-employed people working from home, I think they'll start to re- recognise that they can do more from home than they thought. Yeah, I think they'll take their business more online. Yeah, and I think that they'll do more um, content creation, putting more stuff out online, create a business that's more sustainable online. Yeah. Still with a slight offline factor, I think people still love that. But I think that's what they'll take. It'll cut down costs of travel. Mm. It'll cut down time wasted on travel. It'll cut down costs down on having an office, if that's what you have as well. And yeah. Reduce those costs. And I think people will get a lot more kind of like practical of like how they start the day, how they run the day, how they mm. optimize the performance of the day and how they finish the day and have less wasted bullshit stuff going on which i think we do i think we yeah. have a lot of hundred percent uh, i feel like i feel like the daily commute is a grind that oh. doesn't just doesn't need to happen do you know i hope a lot of people think after this I, i'm not going into the office at eight between eight and nine because i absolutely hate sitting in traffic wherever you know we've all got them in whichever town you live there's always like oh god yeah. that, that road or that bypass where but that every day is causing you to be stressed and stress leads to, well, it leads to illness. It leads to unhealthy lifestyle, bad choices, um, you know, and, and I feel like it's going to smarten us up. And obviously um, what one thing that is thriving from all of this is Zoom. Like <laughs> Zoom has just gone. I mean, I just want to say to all the people jump on the bandwagon, I've been doing Zoom for about a year and a half. So, so, far, so far, yeah. we're, we're originals. Do you know what, though, mate? Don't you wish you got chairs in Zoom three months ago? <laughs> ah, talk about talk about um, decisions and two. Well, two platforms: Zoom, um, business, like what we're doing, but as well, TikTok has gone oh. absolutely <laughs> bonkers. And people are just bored, aren't they? Just not off TikTok videos. I'm like. <laughs> How are you doing, man? <laughs> I know. Um, so, out of every out of every great crisis, there's, there's always a, a positive moment, isn't there? Or, or someone always someone always benefits um, from a personal standpoint. The next time we have a crisis, and there will be another crisis because that's how that's how life and work, the world of work works. Yeah. If you knew this was going to happen three months ago, about no, like November time or something like that, what would you have done different? Would you have cancelled Christmas and bunkered down? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is difficult, mate. Um, I don't know what I would have done differently because I'm loving this. Time. Right. Now, as much, now, as much as I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a few things, mate. As much as um, I'm not getting out as much to socialise and see friends and family, Mm-hmm. That's the only drawback. <clears throat> That's the only drawback I've got. I'm loving this time because it's given me all the space I want to work on myself and my business. Wow. The challenge that this time has created is means our wedding got cancelled. So our wedding was on the 25th of April in Spain this year. Wow, wow. Now that has been moved to the end of August, which is good. And my fiance worked the tail ends to be able to move that over and get that done. So a lot of credit to her for doing yeah. that. That, that, that was the, like, the biggest stress kind of I've, we've had over it, you know, like this country's closing down, you're like, like all this money's been sunk into this plan for two years, what the hell are we going to do? Yeah. Um, if I could have, I might have moved that forward. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That might, if I'd known in advance, that might yeah. be thing. But apart from that, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know, there's, there's, we, we sort of talked before, uh, David, but one thing I've always 
sort of picked up on on you when we've done stuff online and sort of stuff that you post. I've never seen you comment in a negative manner. I've never seen you post a negative post. Like, how important is it would you say to people about staying away from negativity in general? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say massively. I, do you know what? I think there's there's a there's an element of like you can get very enthralled and triggered in a negative. Mm. Like I found myself doing that just a f- the other day. You got on social media and you're looking at like certain things like people's negative behavior and you're looking on the feed like Boris Johnson, for example, is getting yeah. like hammered and you're just like, you see his comments and you start getting enraged, right? Yeah. That's not good. The, the thing is that, that t- if we look at it from a me- mindset point of view, that, that comment doesn't, shouldn't trigger me. That's no, my no. problem. That's my fault. I'm mm-hmm. the one getting emotionally invested, but I'm, I'm with you. I think you've got to not, not, bullshit yourself and put a positive spin on everything that isn't there not lie to yourself but find the silver lining or positive in everything because i think it is there i mm. think it's always in there i think you know with every crisis there's a positive like we just spoke yeah, about yeah. with every situation there's something to find that change for you and yeah. i think the problem with it is is we can get very fearful and doubtful so going down the negative route and then everything we see reading here is negative so if that's where you are it's about stepping out of that doing things that you more enjoy more, making yourself a little happier, and you'll find the positives and stuff. So I don't mm. post any negative stuff because I don't think it helps. It's not really who I am. Do I have bad days? Of course I do, mate. Yeah. Like, yeah, like any human, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I try to find how can I switch that to more of a positive day for myself. I always sort of tell people, be careful when you post good news stories or good stories about yourself. Take the time to notice who likes and comments on it and, mm. and then post a negative story and see who likes and comments on it. And good one, those, and I, and, I, and I say to people, um, and I'll say, the people who are drawn to the negative, just delete every single one of them because that, that's what they love. They love the negative and they'll never offer you anything positive. And you, you look at a post, um, a, a good news story post, and it'll get very, very little traction. But, you know, if you put something on there, um, controversial, mm-hmm. boom, it's, there's a catalyst. People, people just love um, putting the 10 pence worth in. Like, we've got, like, a, a Facebook page. You know you're from Dalo. And at the moment, like, um, Karen from Facebook is just, like, all over it. Do you know what I mean? Like, every other post, she's like, so many people of this, so many people of that. And I'm like... I've just like unfollow anyone or block them or whatever it is. I'm like, yep, see you later. Um, yeah. Because I, I, they're drawn to it. Of course, mate. I mean, like you just have to look, watch the news and isn't like 90% of the news negative. Like isn't, like I stopped watching the news about 2008. I stopped <laughs> watching the news completely from that point. Stop reading newspapers and everything. Yeah. Not because I feel like sometimes you think, oh, I'm not as informed as I would like to be about some subjects, but you're just getting like smashed with this shit, just mm. constant negativity. And it can draw you into this sense that like, everything's bad, the world's bad, the world yeah. is in a good place. And you can miss the point that there's some great people out there. 100%. And if the news shared some positive stories of positive things that are happening. Like, look what's happening now. Everybody's getting behind the NHS. Everybody's yeah. having a on a night. It's beautiful. People are getting yeah. behind that. But then, equally a few months down the line, it'll be like, wow, well, hospital shit, you can't get an appointment. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 100%. And um, what I think will come after COVID-19, and I, and I think will be better for this um, period of hardship, um, because hardship creates community and it's almost like karma has taught us a, a lesson we, mm. we fought each other for three years over remain and leave just batted each other day in day out day in day out and we taught we taught each other a path now yeah. it's a case of like mother nature's gone I've, I've kind of had enough of you a lot have a bit of this um and and sort of see how you get on but there's a lot of people coming together there's neighbors doing shopping yeah. for people there's people checking in on other people People are doing other people's gardens. Like a real, they called it the blitz spirit, didn't they, during World War II? And, and I yeah. feel like we're getting uh, some some form of, of uh, blitz, blitz sort of spirit. And, and, it, and it's good to see. 
And though the world's got very big, I feel like more people care about small and, um, mm -hmm. you know, small businesses and, you know, people are sort of taking the time. Um, there's an initiative at the moment in Darton where we're all buying from like individual small businesses at the moment. So um, yeah. falafel fella takeaways, like that sort of stuff to sort of maybe just to yeah. keep them ticking over during this time before they can um, yeah. reopen again. Now it's, it, it, it's, it's a dead interesting thing. And I, I, I say to people as well, if you look into the black hole long enough, eventually it look back at you and then it knows your face and then all you ever do. And I've been down that road where it's like, it ends up being tribal. And before you know it, you're meeting people in South Park for a tear up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> what's going, what's going on here? How does how this even become a thing? But you, 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 you see, you know, you, you, you see the threads um, and people are just wanting to knock absolute uh, bits out of each other. Uh, one thing I want to sort of say as well, um, today you've committed on doing the, the uh, Lakes Monster, which I'll just say congratulations for signing up for the hardest day of your life. Uh, Mate, I, I've done I've done some hard challenges in my past, so I, but I need and do you know what I thought, right, mate? I thought what a great gr group of lads to do with because I know yeah. a few of you guys that I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. It's great first charity, which yeah. I know somebody personally involved with that. And yeah. you know what I thought? Do you know what? I need a reason to keep myself getting in shape over this lockdown. I thought, yeah, right, definitely, because I get married the week after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can't chuck us off. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there'll be no, there'll be no, there'll be no, uh, there'll be none of that. Look, and it's right that we're going to help frontline services and, and, and the staff yeah. and, and yeah. especially now, um, it's, 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 it's absolutely at the forefront of everyone's mind, the NHS. Um, and it always should have been because again, because something's free and it's always been there, we, mm -hmm. we take it for granted, don't we? Yeah. And you've got to have respect for it, man. Like, people, like, tearing into it, like, for years, like, mm. oh, you can't get this, you can't get that. And it's like, that service is there when you need it if you're having an accident. Mm. And no one has, like, its fault the same as anything. Think, yeah. What a great, what a great service. And I, I just, like, I never want to lose that for our country. Do you know what nah. I mean? Never, ever. Nah, 100%. Um, David, look, uh, thanks very much for your time. We're going to sort of look at doing a little bit of the close down and... Um, personal favourite of mine because I'm I'm interested in and I'm inspired by what people tell me when we do this. So we're going to do the five watts, which is yeah. sort of how they're coping through this lockdown. Mm. Lockdown with Disney Plus. You can't be here. <laughs> <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> lockdown um, life. Yeah. So the first one, uh, what does your day look like? So the day looks like right now, it's obviously got a little different, but it looks like getting up at, uh, I get about half seven. Um, yeah, I get up and I always basically I do what's called like strategic journaling. So I I like focus on like how I want to feel today, what my number one priority is, what I'm looking forward to today, and what actions I'm going to take. That's just to get my mind mentally ready. I have a nice cup of coffee, sit and do yeah. that, and then I'll do something to get my energy up. So whether or not that's go for a walk, do a little workout, do some yoga of something, something not too intensive, maybe thirty minutes just to get things going, yeah. and then cold shower and then get into me day, and I'll start oh. working with clients from around about 10 o'clock onwards. The cold shower thing, um, is that that, what that guy did? I can't remember his name. Is that the where Wim, this is coming? The Wim Hof. <laughs> no, Wim Hof. He's a legend, the Wim Hof. <laughs> <laughs> wow, cold showers. Have you ever done it, mate? No, I've never done it. Well, oh, no, I'll, I'll, tell a, I'll tell a little story. When I went to uh, Morocco last, last year, when we did Tub Cal, um, I sort of got this idea that you can acclimatise yourself better to cold weather by um, basically taking baths or showers, and I chose baths, where every time I had a bath, it was slightly colder. And then before you knew it, I was sort of almost sitting in, not ice cold water, but I was sitting in considerably colder water for longer periods of time. Yeah. Um, to sort of... Build, I want to, I'll steal David Goggins word here, build calluses on the mind about like, <laughs> I am now comfortable sitting in a cold uh -huh. bath. So that yeah, means yeah. my my body and my mind are like, well, we know it's cold, but we've been here before. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like just, it. Just do that. No, but that's, that's, a, that's a great stuff. So yeah, you were saying? Yeah, so then cold showers and I start working um, with clients or starting my work working from 10 onwards. 
Right. And then it depends on what I've got on. Sometimes I don't finish till about seven at night. Don't get us wrong, mate. I'm not right. all the way through. Yeah, yeah. I like to take a little break in the afternoon where I'll then do an actual workout or yeah. get some sun or whatever to get me going for rest and then finish sometimes four o'clock, sometimes seven o'clock. Brilliant. And, and then I'll just sit down, make some food, relax with my fiance. You know, Brilliant. try and spend some time together as well. And I'll also share this as well, mate. I've also tried to ensure that I've created a, a weekend as well, not letting every day run into each other. So ah, cool. Like finishing a specific time, um, lunchtime on on Friday, and then not going back to work on Monday and having Saturday and Sundays off days, you know, offline, off social media, just kind of nice. during the weekends. Otherwise, that's they a, run it themselves. No, yeah, that's a fair point. Um, second one, what workouts are you doing? I, I said to you before the podcast started, I've dug out the old Sean T insanity this morning. <laughs> Johnny T. Insanity. The boy. <laughs> the boy <up. laughs> yeah. So, so, mate, so, um, I do, um, I go, either go for a run. So, yeah. go, go out for a run. Uh, yoga. And I'll do different types of yoga. So, either something with a bit of intensity, like an hour. I'll just yeah. watch it off YouTube. Or I'll do something more flexible. And then I'll do some form of weight, like hip weight type. So I've got yeah, a yeah. couple of dumbbells or some kettlebells and making sure I'm doing some body weight, cardio-based routines. Yeah. And I'm working out about five days a week. That's kind of what I'm at. Yeah. Um, and, and, that, and that's working all right for me at the minute. Yeah, oh, fair play. That's a class one. Um, third one, what have you started? Have you started anything new? Started new. Right, what have I started? I've started... Nothing that isn't, I haven't saw any new that isn't business related. Right. And so what I've been doing is I've been, I've started working with a friend guy of mine to help me cr basically move stuff more online to produce an online program coming out the back end of this COVID-19. Not about, it's got nothing to do with COVID-19. This is a program yeah. for men, but we're working to set the online system up. So nice. I can have webinars and have an online presence that supports what I want to do going forward. So Amazing. we're kind of doing that. Amazing. Um, fourth one, what have you stopped doing? Going to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm Fair not enough. a big boozer, mate, but I, oh, oh, fucking hell, uh, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I've stopped doing that, unfortunately. Right. I couldn't do it, so that got shut down in middle of March. Um, I'd been doing that for about three and a half months, loving it. I was thoroughly enjoying it. I can't wait to get back to it. Yeah. But that is something I have stopped doing. Where, right where did you do that, David? Where did you Fifth, do Fifth Element over in uh, Abbey Sports Centre. Great nice. club, great group of guys um, who, who run it, you know, and a lovely community. Just, do you know what? You go somewhere and it's just such a good community. No egos. Mm. Just everybody's there to help each other. Just a good sport and it's hard work. And I feel like really moved me fitness forward. But, I enjoyed it and I'm a bit missing it a bit. Like, yeah, well, that's, that's a fair point. Um, fifth and final one, what's the first thing you're going to do after lockdown's finished? Go to jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say hug, hug me mum and that, but I'll do that on the way to jiu-jitsu. <laughs> I want to I hug some fellas on the floor. <laughs> I, I want to get choked out by some dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, fair play to you. Yeah. Um, Look, David, thanks very much for your time. It's been You're great welcome. to get you on. Um, uh -huh. Proper interesting guy, and I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person and uh, working with you and, and, and this event's coming up. I think it's going to be absolutely class. Um, where can people find you if they want to find you, if you uh, want them to find you? <laughs> yeah, so uh, davidwilkinsonperformance.com. That's where yeah. my website is, so Dave, davidwilkinsonperformance.com. Or on LinkedIn, search for David Wilkinson. Or if you're on Twitter, um, sorry, not Twitter, Instagram, David Wilkinson Coach. So it's, everything's around that name. Brilliant, brilliant. Right, uh, David, look, thanks very much for your time. You're Ladies welcome. and gentlemen, another awesome podcast. Uh, another one tomorrow. I'm going to keep them rocking and rolling. Um, it's all about what we do in these times that define us. So on that one, I'll leave you there. David, thanks very much. Adios. Thank you, John. Cheers. Cheers. Adios. Thank you.